Cops and other law enforcement people have read it, what were some cases you worked on that made you think, even if for a moment, that something supernatural slash paranormal was going on? Episode, 5 I know an old detective who has lots of stories, one of which he loves to tell as a paranormal one. In his younger days, two patrol officers found a woman in white wandering around a graveyard barefoot past midnight. They asked her what she was doing, and she said she was lost, so they brought her back to the station. At the station, this detective was on duty with his partner, who handled the woman's case. His partner took down her details and let her go. The detective I know, never saw her face, only his partner did, but he remembers seeing her back as she walked out of the station, and for some reason, she was tiptoeing as she left. His partner ran her ID or name through the system after she left, and apparently, she was supposed to be dead. When I first joined the police, during our first two days of training school, we had a lecture from this old sweat, British police slang for an officer who has been in the force for a long time, who'd been in the job for about 20 years. He told us of his weirdest experience of policing. He said he'd been out on patrol in a car when they got an abandoned call to a house. He got there, and it was a big house sort of isolated, and they knocked on the door, and no one answered. He went to open the door, and it was unlocked, and he walked in. The house was empty. No people, no furniture, no possessions. Completely vacant. He looked around and found no one there, but then looked upstairs and thought he saw someone move. He went upstairs. It was a really big house with a long hall upstairs. When he got up there, he saw someone go into the bedroom right at the end of the hall. He followed the person there, calling out as he went. Again, all the other rooms were completely empty of even furniture. When he got to the room, he saw the person go in, he found it completely empty. No one was in it, and nothing was there apart from a big, long mirror. He walked into the room and looked into the mirror. He told us he saw something in the mirror that he said had haunted him for the rest of his life. He wouldn't tell us what he saw, and said he'd tell no one ever, but that it terrified him. He turned around and left the room to leave. As he walked down the hallway, he saw that all the rooms were now filled with furniture. No one was there still, but the house no longer looked abandoned. He said he left the house that day, never knowing what had happened, or who had called the police, but absolutely 100% sure of what he'd seen. He was completely serious, and it was obvious that he really believed that was what he'd seen, and it gave me chills down my spine when he was telling us. I've never forgotten it. Obligatory not me, but a friend. Well, not really, since I was there as well, but I wasn't the traffic cop. I am from a fairly small town in southern Europe, Pop. 6,000. I rarely visit it, and even more rarely go out, but when I do, it is usually with one of my childhood friends whose father is a police officer in the local department. One night we are driving through town, keep in mind this is a fairly small, isolated town, when my friend gets pulled over for driving 15 kmph above the 50 kmph city limit. As the officers are joking with him, they knew him through his father, a car that must have been going at least 90 kmph darts by us, takes a left turn, and disappears behind the corner 30 meters away. We immediately hear this horrendous cacophony of crashing sounds, tires screeching, breaking glass, and explosion, and rush to the scene, expecting to see devastation and fire. There was nothing. No car, no tire marks, no broken glass, not the slightest sign of a crash. No sign of the car either, although the street wasn't short enough for it to disappear, and one of the cops immediately jumped in their car and tried to track the vehicle. It just vanished after waking the residents that lived on the street, and before we even got the chance to identify it further than it being a dark-colored Volkswagen Golf. Mystery over, guys. I haven't talked about this accident with my friend since it occurred, so I asked him if he remembered it. Turns out he did, and he also knew the follow-up, they found the driver a week later thanks to some security camera footage and another reckless driving incident. After making that sharp left turn, he slammed into a horizontal pole on a sidewalk scaffolding, facade renovation, which broke his front right seat window inwards, that's why there was no glass. The explosion sound must have been the scaffolding making noise. However, I still cannot imagine how he managed to get away so quickly. He was also very lucky that the pole didn't kill or injure him. Cop for 15 years in a gang-infested war zone. It was a late graveyard night. I got a call that an old lady is saying, she sees someone in her backyard. The dispatcher tells me this is like the eighth time this week she's called, and we never found anything. So, I go thinking this is just another crazy lady who calls and is lonely. My beat partner and I go in. She's saying he's still in the backyard somewhere. Sure, lady. 
I walk out of the slider and start checking the very nice and full backyard. It has several Japanese maples, bushes, and a small pond. The ground is flat rock. It's a very nice backyard. Then as I'm walking around shining my light to make this lady happy so we can go to the next call, I suddenly feel weird, like fear. I got that feeling in known dangerous situations but now had it for no reason. I shine my light on the top of the fence, and there is a guy in a black hoodie and black sweats with a hood over his head. His head is down, and I can't see his face. He's up on the top of the fence, and he's squatting perched like a bird. He is just sitting there with no fear or anything while two cops start searching the yard. I'm shocked. Nobody acts like that. They run or surrender immediately. Nobody just chills like that. So, before I can say anything, he then does a backflip off the fence into the yard behind him. I hop on the fence, and he is running through the yard super. Oddly fast. Call the chopper, several units, and we search the whole block for nothing. The lady would call in all the time, and guys would never find anything. She even called once, saying he was in the yard in a clown suit playing cards. Yeah, creepy. Went on for months until she stopped calling. Who knows what the hell happened? Another story. I was in the gang unit at this time so I had a car partner. He's driving. We are driving down the road late, at like 3 am. Up ahead, we see a car pulled over, the people are out, a guy and gal about 30s. They are staring ahead into the sky. This mind you was down an outskirt of the town country road. So, we look up to where they are looking and see about 6 bright lights in the sky in a rectangle formation. They were going up and down, side to side, in perfect formation. My partner says, those have got to be drones. We get out and look at the people, puzzled as well. They are like, oh my god, do you see this? We stare at them for about 10 seconds then some of the lights shut off as the others still are moving around perfectly. I shine my light at them, and they immediately disappear. It was instant. Nobody is that fast. So, we get back in the car and start driving more down the road to see what's up. I look over and, in the pitch black sky to our side, there was a black craft shaped like a pear. It was matched almost perfectly with the night sky and hard to see. We partially illuminated it as we passed it with our headlights. I saw it. My partner didn't. I told him to stop and look. We stopped, got out, the craft was gone. He thought I was crazy. I saw what I saw. We looked around a bit and saw nothing else. I fly drones. I know them well even personally train the department on drone capabilities for police. We now have a program. Those were not drones. Way too bright and no sound. This was about 5 years ago, so drone tech was not as good yet. Also, the field they were above was a dairy. Nobody we saw anywhere nearby. A few years later, I was outside my house with my 3-year-old daughter. Every night before bed, we would look at the stars. It was a routine. So, she asks me what that star is as she points out one that is very bright. I look at it, and it's near the horizon, and it's extremely bright and out of place. As we stare at it, it accelerates to a super speed and disappears over the horizon. My daughter and I were both speechless. I, without a doubt, believe there is alien life out there, and we have been visited. Not sure if you guys would want to hear an Asian story, but I thought it's worth sharing. This was told by my dad when I was 12. Even now, when I ask him about the story, he can remember every vivid detail like it just happened last week. My dad was in the police force for 20 years, and when we were just a rookie, he had to conduct nighttime roadblocks meant to catch drunk drivers. They had done it many times before, and this night started routine enough for them. That was until this Toyota Corolla drove up to them with what looked like a white blanket on its roof, flapping in the wind. They thought it was weird but did not see anything amiss about it. One of them even joked that this guy was multitasking by drying his laundry and driving home at the same time. The laugh stopped when the lone car came closer, and all of them saw what looked like a woman in white lying face down on top of the car. The woman seemed to slide like a slug backward, until she disappeared behind the car as it eventually came to a stop in front of them. It took a few minutes for my dad's team to recompose themselves as they stared at each other as if to say, you guys saw that, right? The most senior of them finally stepped up and shot the usual questions to the driver. There was a noticeable quiver in his voice as he made conversation and asked him to step out of the vehicle. My dad's team inspected the whole vehicle, including the boot, and found nothing strange in it. The driver was a good-looking staff sergeant in the army who was heading home from a company event earlier that night and admitted having had a few cans of beer. He said he laid down in his bunk to sleep it off, hence why he was driving home at that time, it was 4 am. He passed their sobriety test, and they started to ask him if he saw anything weird during his drive. Initially, he said no, but after more questioning, 
He mentioned that he had to swerve to avoid what looked like a bird that was flying upside down. It was spooky, but I didn't think that was a detail worth sharing with police officers. The senior then told the guy to chill out at a 24-hour coffee shop before heading home. The locals believe that if a malevolent spirit follows you, making a pit stop confuses them, so they can't set up shop in your house. After some confusion of his own, the driver finally caught on and nodded in agreement. After the guy leaves, they call into the station and cut the night short. Never knew what happened to the driver. I hope he's all right. I see you nurse here. We had a patient that was dying. No family. Around 3 a.m., the guy started crying and asking why the little girl in the yellow dress was in the hospital. We assure him there is no little girl. He cries even more, saying, yes, there is. She is at the foot of the bed. I'm not kidding, the man passed in the next few minutes. My pod partner and I blamed the hallucination on the meds we were giving him to keep him comfortable. Next night, a new patient is in the room. She's completely alert and oriented. About 3 a.m., she hits her call light. She wants to know why the little girl in the yellow dress was outside her room. We told her it was just her imagination from being in a strange place. Not five minutes later, the guy in the next room goes into full cardiac arrest, and unfortunately, we can't receive him. Of course, we absolutely freak. Two different nights. Two different patients see the same thing. All followed by death. Before my dad became a state police officer, he did some security work at a big factory. He's not normally a superstitious person, so when he told me this story with such a weird seriousness to it, it kind of scared the shit out of me. He's always said, I don't mess with that stuff regarding supernatural things, but anyway. This story is from the early 80s. With working at the factory, he always had the night shift. It was just him in the big ass factory. He had his own little room where he could watch TV, listen to the radio, and do whatever. But the rest of the factory, for the most part besides the exits, was dark. His job was to actually patrol the factory every hour. He'd get up, grab his flashlight, and just stroll around the place going down row by row, peeking his head out left to the right. One night he set out to do his usual run, with a flashlight in hand. But he could see that something was unusual to his eye when he walked out into the dark. You know that sensation you get when your eyes adjust to the room, and you can just start to make out certain objects but nothing full or whole. There was something darker in the main hall or row. And it was moving. He paused for a minute, and as his eyes fully adjusted, there seemed to be nothing. He took a second to wipe the factory with his light. And then decided that he was just seeing things. He went down into the main row and started his run. Everything was normal, nothing out of the ordinary. Although he was still a bit on edge, seeing as the factory without a big moving shadow was creepy enough. When the rows of the factory ended, there was a big open area at the end. This was the entrance to the factory. Normally there would be a light at the front door, but tonight it had dimmed lower. He thought that was weird and really began to sweat, so instead of investigating any further, he turned from the exit and went to go back into the main row and get back up to his room. That's when in the corner of his eye, on the right side, he could see what he described as a black cloaked figure. His light hit it, and he saw it. Tall and distinctly human-like. But he didn't stop. He just went right back to his room, locked the door and stayed in there until it was light out. He left the factory and called the owner to tell him he wouldn't be returning to the job. I don't blame him. My brother is a deputy, and at the time, I worked as an EMT for a few small towns in northeast Colorado. I frequently went on a ride along with him while waiting for 9-11 calls to come in. This took place in Amherst, Colorado. The town is very small. Amherst has about 50 people, a church, some houses, a grain tower, and a park. It was about 3 a.m., and we were about to call it a night. As we were making our last check on Amherst, we noticed movement at the park but couldn't tell exactly what was going on because it was pitch black. We drove up and stopped alongside the dirt road, flipped on the spotlight, and as we moved the light around the park, it finally settled on the back of a young girl, maybe 13, sitting on a swing with her back facing us. We left the spotlight on her. She wasn't moving. She just sat there facing away from us, looking down at the ground. Needless to say, it was a very creepy situation. We both looked at each other with that face you would make when something was out of the ordinary. I quickly suggested that we should call her over using the PA system. He agreed. As we looked back over, she was gone. I mean, no signs of anyone anywhere. The park was in a wide open area. She couldn't have gotten out of sight in the amount of time that we had our exchange of words. I remember saying, should we get out and look for her? Maybe she hid behind one of the park toys or something. 
My brother just looked at me and said, hell to the no, and drove away. It still creeps me out to this day. This actually happened to me the other night. I was doing nighttime K9 training at a local abandoned sanitarium slash hospital that is owned by the state. This building is comprised of the old section, which was largely converted to offices, and a newer section, which looks like a standard hospital. We had several guys and their K9 partners, training that night. All of the dogs stay out in their respective patrol vehicles while they are not being used or trained. For this night, everyone is conducting training in the basement of the newer section of the hospital. They are running scenarios where the dog searches the building and finds a bad guy in a bite suit and bites the bad guy. My dog isn't in that stage of his training yet, so I go off to another floor of the hospital with my head trainer to do other training. Myself, my pup, and the head trainer go to the third floor of the building and begin training. The hospital has a central area that looked to be a nurse's station. Several long hallways lead away from the nursing station. I'm standing in a hallway with my dog facing the nurse's station. The hallway continues for about another 40 yards behind me and has multiple rooms. I put my dog in a sit-stay and began listening to the instructions from my trainer. Both, myself and my dog, are focused on what my trainer is saying. While the instruction is going on, my dog looks back at the hallway behind me. Just as he does this, I hear a deep, mumbled male voice behind me. I interrupt the trainer and turn my head to listen. As I turn my head, the voice fades out. Once the voice fades out, my dog looks forward again. I'm a little freaked out at this point. The hospital is locked down tight. We also walked through to make sure no one was squatting. Even if we missed a squatter, you would think that myself announcing multiple times, police K9 come out now or announce yourself. If not, I'm sending the dog, and you'll be bit. Would drive someone out. I believe in ghosts, but I do not think I was hearing the conversation of the other guys training. We were four floors away in a large hospital. After this happened, I went looking for the noise and never found anything. This story isn't as shocking as some others in this thread, but it still freaked me out. I work graveyard shifts as an unarmed security guard. That's officer rent a cop to you, smartass, just kidding. That's what I call it too, I've had the same post since starting with the company, now going on a year. It's in a fairly busy metropolitan area, but it's really quiet at night. There's a police station practically across the street, so I'm mostly just there to satisfy the insurance company or, on the off chance, someone's brazen enough to try to steal building materials. The main area of the project is an office building. There's a multi-level parking structure that's attached, also mid-construction. The rear of the property is bordered by a tall concrete wall, after which there's a busy highway running in parallel. One night, maybe a week or two after Thanksgiving, I was sitting in my car, deep into an especially long and depraved session of Plague Incorporated, during which I repeatedly killed off all of Earth's inhabitants through very torturous and sadistic means. A thin layer of snow had already accumulated on my windshield since my last patrol. I couldn't really see out of it per se, but I had civilizations to neutralize. Being a good security guard is all about knowing your priorities. That all changed when something violently rattled my car. While I don't have a gun, I do keep nunchaku on me at all times. Blue belt in kung fu, thank you much, so, I grabbed those and my Nebo O2 beam flashlight and jumped out of the car. I couldn't imagine what was responsible for the disturbance, but I assumed my field supervisor had something to do with it. He didn't have much of a sense of humor, but he made it a point to try and sneak up on unaware guards. He wasn't very good at it. It's weird, though, I exit my car, and there's no one in sight. There's a thin layer of snow on the ground, so footprints or tire tracks would have been an obvious giveaway. I was about to write it off as a weird environmental effect, but then it happened again. It didn't feel like a shaking thing when I was on my feet, though. More like a high amplitude current in the ground. Now I'm on high alert, so I switch to the emergency scanner app on my phone to see if they're getting any calls about an earthquake or explosion or something. There's no communication at all for a good five minutes, then some run-of-the-mill chatter about a drunk driver on the other side of town. I'm a little spooked now, but rather than get back in the car, I decided to do my next patrol a little early. I knew there was nothing to worry about, but figured it would put my mind at ease to check the site for myself, just in case. I started by looking around the parking structure. There was only one accessible entrance which my car was parked in front of, but squatters are a thing, and it was a cold night. Nothing. I still had one earbud in on the off chance that people started calling in. There's a domestic disturbance call, then silence. Then the rumbling comes back. The whole structure feels like it's wobbling. I just checked the last corner and decided to get out in case something decided to collapse. 
Just as I leave the garage, something in my periphery catches my attention. On top of the building, there are a couple security lights, but one is completely obscured by a lift and construction materials. So, when I tell you I saw the silhouette of a man on top of the building, understand that it's really just a silhouette. My paranoia is pretty peaked out at this point, which I factored into my assessment of the situation while taking no comfort from it whatsoever. I decided to grab my binoculars out of the car, which I felt confident would reveal the silhouette to be nothing more than heightened pareidolia and a stack of 2x4s. When I got back to the car, I just about lost my shit. There was an impression in the snow, like someone had laid across my hood. Two handprints were melted into the windshield. No footprints or tire tracks except for the ones I knew without question I had made. I pulled out my smartphone, not really sure what I hoped to do with it, but you understand the impulse, it was off, battery dead. Before I got out of the car, the phone had been plugged in and was charging. Over 90% battery. I felt the rumble again, promptly got in the car, after checking the backseat, obviously, and drove it to the other end of the site. If there were squatters there, I would concede the victory. Either way, I never got any complaints from the foreman or my supervisors. I asked one of the other guards if he'd seen anything weird while working the post, and he just shrugged. I still have no idea what happened that night.